something awful happens in most bodies of water in the fall, the turnover. Well, the turnover is exactly like it sounds. Oftentimes it's confused with the fall transition, but it's not the transition we're talking about, summer to fall. We're talking about the turnover, and it's when the water column flips as those temperatures drop, the surface temps, that top portion of the water column cools down and eventually becomes colder than the water that is on the bottom. And obviously colder water is more dense and therefore it will drop and the lighter water, less dense water down in the bottom will come to the top. And you may be asking yourself, how do I know when this turnover happens? Well, on a lot of places, at least that I fish, it's pretty easy to see it visually because all of a sudden you'll come down to your pond or your lake or wherever you're at and there's just all this muck that has come up off the bottom stuff that was down there all summer long and through the early fall is now garbage floating up on top it just looks nasty well when this turnover happens it easily in my opinion creates one of the most difficult times of the year to fish the oxygen levels get all turned up the temperature levels get turned up and what happens is those fish can really spread out and maybe use areas that they haven't been for example you know that as that fall progresses those bass often get very very shallow chasing bait fish up in the shallows when that turnover happens it can pull them off of that really shallow cover and structure and now they're more out in those mid depth ranges maybe instead of in front of you towards the shoreline they are behind you so it it really disturbs the entire process the easiest way that i have found to deal with the turnover is to focus on one thing and one thing only and that is where are the bait fish and I know that's different on each body of water. Maybe you've got huge schools of threadfin shad down south. Maybe way up north you've got big schools of alewives. Maybe you're on smaller bodies of water where minnows are definitely the bait fish that they're keen in on right now. Or maybe you're all sunfish based. You have bluegills and that's it. Focus on where those bait fish are and you're going to make it through this turnover period okay. Now... If you're shore fishing or you don't have electronics on your boat, that means you're going to need to be visual. Walk up and down the shoreline, look for signs of life, signs of bait. Hopefully it's up where you can see it skipping along the surface, or maybe you're noticing some birds circling overhead, that type of stuff. If you're out on the water and you don't have electronics, this is where I put that trolling motor down and just boom, put it on high and start looking, be visual, see can you find life, put the big motor on and idle around, look for signs of life. If you have electronics, this is gonna be a little bit easier, especially if you have side scan to see those balls of bait. They could be down 15 foot. They might be 20 foot down. They might be suspended kind of just out in the middle of the lake. So if you have side scan imaging, Look for those bait fish, those balls of bait, and they're pretty easy to pick up. So spend some time behind the wheel idling, looking for the bait. Now, if you're lucky, the bait's going to be up in the top. That opens up pretty much a wide range of possibilities to imitate those bait fish, whether, you know, we're talking some top waters or, you know, we're talking square bill crankbaits or, you know, swim jigs, stuff that can be fished up in that top part of the water column easily. That's best case scenario. You found the bait fish and they're up. Now, what about if they're suspended out there, they're 12 feet down, 15, 20 feet down? That gets to be a little bit more difficult. If they are intersecting with hard bottom, okay? So in other words, if they're at 15 feet, but they're relating to the bottom of some sort, well, that means you can throw your things like your Carolina rigs, deep diving crake baits, you know, work some sort of, you know, jig or whatever along the bottom. It's going to open that up for you. But if they're in that 15 foot range, 
but they're offshore. They aren't relating to the bottom. They are truly suspending. This is the most difficult way to try and catch these bass. This is when you're going to start to have to use things like your, you know, your, your swim baits, your paddle tails, those types of lures. Let them count down to that depth and then bring them back. You could go ahead and use a drop shot rig and just fish vertically below the boat, the Demiki rig. All of those are really good at picking off suspended fish, but we have to be very aware of what depth we are fishing and where the fish are at. If we're too far above them, we're probably not gonna get bit. If you're way below them, you're not gonna get bit. And as you change weights to heavier jig heads and different lures, that means that we are going to need to adjust our countdown as well. But if you have the electronics, especially if you have something forward seen, you know, like a 360 or whatever, that's going to make catching those suspended fish much, much easier. Just real quickly, as far as like the wind and the sun, when this turnover happens, if you've got some wind, that's always a good thing. That is going to put the bait in more predictable locations. Like we've talked about in other videos, hit those wind blown banks. It's going to usually draw the activity activity up towards the surface when you have wind. If you've got no wind and that sun is out, that is usually when that activity is going to go down. So hopefully when you head out on the turnover, you've got some wind. It can make things easier for you. But really the biggest thing about the turnover is our mental focus as anglers. When you get out there and you see that it has happened, know that it's probably going to be a tough day of fishing. Challenge yourself Tell yourself, you know what, I'm going to work for five good bites today instead of maybe going out and catching 20 or 30. And just know that if you can get this figured out, if you can catch fish during this difficult time of year, man, you are becoming a great, great angler. And hey, if you would like to watch a video on how to set up spinner baits to match the forage in your lake, go ahead and watch this one here on advanced spinner bait setups and tricks. I think you'll find it interesting. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.